Hello, hello, beautiful souls. I'm Esther, also known as Schmexy Pants. Welcome to my channel. So I was gonna do another video tonight talking about how to create states, how to envision ourselves achieving our goals and being the person that we want to be. And I'm still gonna make that video, maybe tonight, maybe not. Um, but as I was sitting here, I was ruminating um, and so something that I want to address first is allowing ourselves to grieve. Um, the thought that came to me was actually from one of my oracle cards, it is safe for me to cry. And I was thinking to myself, oh, I don't really cry very often. And I don't know if it's something that like I viewed as a weakness or something, you know, it's very ingrained. Um, I know I'm a woman, but the idea of boys don't cry is something that I, you know, really grew up with. But crying is a release and it is safe to cry. Um, I think sometimes it's really important to think about who we want to be and create that new self-image. And that's really what I promote. And at other times, we have to acknowledge and grieve the life that may be we thought we would have by now, or things that we feel that we did wrong, or people who disappointed us in the past. So I wanted to give a couple strategies and techniques today that I like to use for when these kind of feelings come up that it's like um, Abraham Hicks, I know I always um, mention them, they talk about you know, you want to go downstream, not upstream, and trying to force yourself to be in a really positive state when you maybe just need to grieve or rage, you're just going to be going upstream. So how do we go downstream? So I think the first thing is really acknowledging how you're feeling. I'm angry. I'm sad. I'm grief-stricken. I'm resentful. And sitting with that feeling for a few moments and being really compassionate with yourself. You know, I had mentioned in one of my shorts the other day that you could write a letter from your future self. Um, and you could absolutely do that if you're grieving, you know, forgiving your past self. Some other things that you could do is write a letter to a person who has upset you and then rip it up or burn it. Or write out your limiting beliefs that you have about yourself and then rip those up and burn them. Another thing you could do is just set a timer and allow yourself to really, really cry and feel into it and know that, you know, crying is not a weakness, it's a strength. Um, again, Abraham Hicks talks about crying being a releasing of that resistance. Um, something you can do is you can phone a friend and ask them if they're available to talk you know, to tell them how you feel. You know, it's very important to validate ourselves and to feel into our self-love. But sometimes if you can't access that in the moment, it is good to talk it out. Um, another thing you can do, I think moving your body. Where do you feel it in your body? Does it feel like tension in your chest or like butterflies in your stomach? Asking yourself what you need to kind of dispel that energy, whether it's slow, deep breaths, or movement can be really helpful. And of course, I always recommend, you know, if it's something that it's more than a momentary thing, it's an ongoing thing, therapy is always, always, you know, I highly recommend it. It's always a good choice. But I feel like if it's something that's more momentary, acknowledging that that's how you're feeling, observing it, seeing what it's telling you, and then seeing how you can move forward. If you can create some sort of other ritual, you know, I've seen people, um, you know, write things that they want to let go of and instead of burning them, maybe sending it off in a balloon or um, you can stomp on it is really fun. You know, um, something that we did in my expressive arts therapy training is even we took stones and wrote little like memorials on the stones like a gravestone. So that could be something very cathartic to do. So I think that really allowing yourself to be generous with yourself, to feel into it. Um, I'm feeling the call to also mention 
EFT tapping, uh, tapping, it's emotional freedom technique. It takes um, statements, usually you could do with affirmations, but it's almost the, the reverse of affirmations. It's tapping on different meridian points. If you look up EFT tapping, emotional freedom technique, um, and it basically, you would say something like, you know, even though I'm really angry at myself for this past situation that has happened, um, I love myself anyway, and you know, know that I'm worthy of a pleasant future. This sucks, it's unfair. And you use the different tapping points, I'm trying to remember all of them, to go through the different, you know, anger or rage or grief. And that can really help you to get back into your body. And so once you've done that, I always like to end something negative with something positive. So I would say really thanking yourself very much for showing up and for being willing to feel these, you know, stuck, unfun feelings. Maybe doing a couple really replenishing, rejuvenating yoga poses after, focusing on the breath, showing gratitude for how much you've overcome and survived, you know, and how far you've come, holding that it's okay to feel grief, but knowing that now you're a conscious creator and that you can move forward from this space. And then repeating it as, as often as necessary, really giving yourself that holding and love. So I hope that helps and I hope you have the most beautiful day. And so like and comment if you find this type of content helpful. So I'm wishing you the most beautiful day.